Uh, Sunday Night Football is the Chicago Bears facing the Houston Texans. This one's in Houston. Uh, matchup that matters here from you, Carmen. What do you think about this one? Uh, it's Caleb Williams versus the Houston Pass Rush. Uh, he only took two sacks against Tennessee. Obviously did not look comfortable, though, all day against that Tennessee defensive front. Um, Houston didn't really do much in the past into the pass rush last week, which is, I think, not indicative of what we should expect from D'Amico Ryan's. Yeah, they had the second fewest total pressures in week one. Only the Panthers had worse. So that gives you some context there. Um, that presents an opportunity for this Bears O-line, which I do think is improved. And it's, it's important that they show that they are improved and not get taken by surprise uh, like they were against Tennessee. However, Caleb Williams, given that he is new to the league, he is new to the system. All of his weapons are new to the system. All of that stuff. His average time to throw was the third longest at 4.31 seconds. Mm. Houston has Daniil Hunter. Mm. I will repeat. Caleb Williams takes 4.31 seconds to throw the ball on average. And the Houston Texans have Daniil Hunter. That he's Daniil Hunter was quiet last week. I don't expect that to continue. Not in D'Amico Ryan's scheme. So the key is limiting points here because we don't know what this Bears offense can really do. Um and and like I just I don't know it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting because I think that Houston also has an opportunity here to really just kind of mess with this Bears offense. Yeah, I, I, time to throw has been you know sort of an issue for Caleb Williams. So I obviously right. like him being able to accelerate. I expect that. It's gonna be to get better for the record. Yeah, I yeah, expect yeah. It to get better. And I think, as he gets I think more comfortable in the does. offense. But a singular that's matchup. The Normally, we talk about like a certain unit or position group going up against each other. There is a singular matchup that I'm really looking forward to that I think is going to matter a lot in this game. It's Nico Collins going up against Jalen Johnson, mm -hmm. the stud corner for the Bears going up against the stud receiver for the Houston Texans. In single coverage last week, Nico Collins, 94.8 receiving grade. I mean, he is just he is showing that last year was not a fluke. His elite play last year was not just a one-year wonder type of a thing. Excellent game last week, especially against single coverage. Jalen Johnson in single coverage last week, 92.3 PFF grade, uh, 13 snaps, two targets, zero catches allowed, one interception, one forced incompletion. He is showing that last year uh, was not any sort of fluke, and it is, in fact, who he is moving forward. The contract was worth it, all that good stuff. So that one-on-one -on -one matchup, two guys that love to play single coverage and are great, or should I say elite at it, that is a major matchup that matters in this one because whoever is winning that one most of the time, yes, Houston has other weapons that they could go to and Tank Dell and Stephon Diggs and, like, the other parts of the group have to step up. There's no doubt. But if Jalen is getting beat in single coverage, well, that's going to make it tough for the rest of the defense, especially that secondary, to play the way that they need to. But if he is playing well, then it certainly gives the Chicago Bears a an opportunity to go up against and, and match up against one of the best and most talented offenses that we have in the league. So <laughs> who is your plus factor here for this game? Yeah, uh, It is specifically the Bears' third down defense. Now, they did well against the Titans on third down, and that was great, but C.J. Stroud is not Will Levis. In fact, C.J. Stroud on third and fourth down last week was nine for nine, 85 yards, and two touchdowns. So this is like the definition of clutch. And if they, the Houston Texans are allowed to convert all of these third and fourth downs and go down the field and score on you on these third and fourth downs, that's demoralizing for the defense, and it also – does not put a cap on the scoring that is, that CJ Stroud is capable of leading this Houston offense to. So I really think that particularly this is going to come down to how well the Bears do on third down and their secondary in particular. Uh, we know, like you said, talked about Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson, one defensive player of the NFC defensive player of the week after he yeah. had the pick six and is starting to see the field really well. You saw this Bears defense, especially the back level, clamped down in the second half of last week's game. However, again, that was the Tennessee Titans. This is now the Houston Texans and CJ Stroud with all of those weapons that we just mentioned. So get off the field on third down and or get them off the field, I should say, on third down and and you're and you're good. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, my plus factor, it, it is CJ, uh, and it and it has to be yep. because you know, you mentioned some of the third down statistics of how well he played. Just just watching his game back. You know, again, was it was it a perfect game? No, I, I think he had like two or three turnover worthy plays. You know, one of them was an interception, but it was a flag, so it didn't count, right? And and there are moments where he could have been better, but you watch him play against the Colts this past week, and 
he shows you everything you want from a franchise quarterback. Off-platform throws, in-structure throws, on the run, navigating the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, going to different reads in the progression, keeping his eyes downfield for the big play as well, mm-hmm. being fearless in the red zone. Like You talked about his third down, the clutch gene, playing well on third down. C.J. Stroud showed you everything you wanted to see last week. And it was a tough game. It was a division game. It was down to the wire. It was a two-point game. And Stroud came away victorious. And again, it wasn't perfect, but it was like a damn, give me that guy for the next, you know, I don't I don't want to say 10 years because people I think over exaggerate how long NFL players stay good in this league. But you give me this guy for the next five, six, seven years, and I'm just gonna be I feel like you're gonna be so happy. He he's he is already ascending into one of the top 10 quarterbacks in this league. And I think that he should I also that. don't feel like that timetable is true for quarterbacks though. I mean, we've seen quarterbacks has been particular because their careers are so long be good. No, for that's true. You can play quite a long into, time. You can play into a long like having a long career, there's no doubt about it. But right. I always, as a draft guy, it bothers me <laughs> so much when people go, oh, just draft this guy, draft this offensive tackle number three overall, and you won't right. have to worry about it for the next 10 years. What offensive tackles are playing Very for few. 10 straight years in an all-pro level that you don't have Very to few. worry about? Nobody. Who does that? Trent like, Williams does that, but yeah, you know. Trent Williams, <laughs> Joel Thomas. Works. You're, you're basically, works going you're basically <laughs> calling this player a Hall of Famer without calling him a Hall of Fame. And so I always think that's so ridiculous. I hate the whole like, oh, just draft him and you'll never have to worry about him for a decade. I think it's a stupid phrase. I want it to be gone. Uh, is this so the I didn't first is this the first Trevor Rant that we're yeah, getting? I think it is. Yeah, I think it, I I we, we we got it here at the end of the two hour show, but you did it. You you did it, Carmen. You you pushed the button and there it was, me blowing up into my uh my annoyance level.